narcissist husband showed his true colors during the honeymoon hmm check this out the first red flag that i got from my narcissistic ex-husband when we first got married so if you've been following me for a while or you know anything really about narcissists is that they are master manipulators so stuff like this that happened in our marriage from literally the story that i'm about to tell that happened on our honeymoon um it didn't happen while we were dating there was obviously little red flags here and there that i obviously completely ignored or was just so like love bombed into not seeing them that when stuff like this happened after we got married after the paper was signed and everything i was like oh crap so before there's any judgment about well, you chose this you chose to marry him the you know all those people that obviously know what they're talking about um remember that they're master manipulators and they can get anyone to do anything basically when we got married there was a flip that was switched immediately when we got married it's like he was like okay now you are trapped now i can do what i want and this is the first thing that happened so we we're on our honeymoon we went on a cruise for our honeymoon and i had been on a couple cruises before he had not um it was the day that we were getting off the boat because we landed in mexico so okay yeah let's get off the boat let's go um number one we didn't have a good amount of time like we didn't have all day you know if you've ever been on a cruise you know that there's a certain time and if you're not back on the boat at a certain point then they will leave you so he is like i'm on vacation i want to sleep in that's fine but at the same time like we're kind of on a schedule because we also had like a thing that we had to go do at a certain time so i was already a little bit stressed out and he did use sleep as control so much where he would get so high so drunk that he would sleep until like two in the afternoon most days and if i was like hey uh we have somewhere to be it would immediately be a fight that's how the day started is that he was oversleeping and he was already a little bit pissed off at me because i was reminding him that we had plans on our honeymoon once again i can see all of the comments coming in of oh you were already nagging him on your honeymoon no i was just you know reminding him so everything started before we even got off the boat there's a certain way that you have to get off the boat there's an intercom telling you how to do it there's signs telling you where to go there's people who have been on cruises before that could tell you how to do it but you know what i was like he seems like he knows where he's going let's just follow him i'm keeping my mouth shut and i'm thinking i know that we're going the wrong way i know that we are but i was like you know what i'm just gonna let him do what he what he wants to do because he was already mad at me for waking him up so i was like you know what i'm just gonna let him do his thing after like 15 minutes of just wandering around how do we get off this boat which how do you how but anyway i tell him hey i'm sorry it's it's this way like we, we've got to go this way and he's like oh you don't know what you're talking about and i tell him like i've been on a cruise before i'm listening to the intercom i'm reading the signs like i'm i'm trying to i'm just trying to help us I start walking this way and I touch his arm, not grab his arm. In his version of the story, I grab his arm like this and I'm like, come on. That's not how that happened. I grabbed like this, my newlywed husband's arm on our honeymoon. And he reared his arm back, put his hand up at me and said, I'm the man, you're the woman. You do what I say, I'm not listening to you. Great feeling on your honeymoon. So he stands there like that. I stand there looking at him and I'm like, what are you gonna do? And no, he doesn't have the courage to hit me, but he does decide to not talk to me for a few hours, probably three to four hours of our honeymoon. We somehow find our way off the boat. Immediately, I need a drink. I need to go get a drink. I'm like, so we go and we literally just sit at this restaurant with him drinking beer for like another hour and he's just not talking to me. So whenever he finally stops the silent treatment, he looks at me and goes, I had a feeling this is how it was going to be and I just need to let you know right now how, how this is going to, how this is going to work. So I'm like, okay, here we go. What's, what's about to be said? And he goes, well, the Bible does tell us that wives submit to their husbands. And I didn't see a good example of that today. You trying to lead us 
as if you were the husband off the boat when I clearly had it handled, that's not you submitting. So what we are gonna do is you're gonna submit to me and we're gonna do what I say. You can have your opinion. You cannot ask for submission. <laughs> you earn submission. You don't ask for submission. You can't. You can just ask for submission arrogantly and get it. Trust me. Never. You have your opinions, but final say is from me. Side note. Yes, the Bible does say that. The Bible did not say that you can use that can to control your wife. Because that's, I, I can go on a rant about that all day. But he was using this completely out of context to completely control me. And you can see where that got him. A divorce. Just another little side note. Any kind of negative comments because I love them. I love to read them before I block them. So go ahead and comment them if you want. Because I love when the men find my videos again and they're like, We know that you were doing something. I want to hear his side of the story. I want to, go ahead. Go ahead and let us laugh at you. Looking back on that situation now, Absolutely, I should have been more aware and careful of situations that came up like this because that was a mild one compared to what would happen to me in the next few years in our marriage. But thankfully, me and my son are gone. Narcissists are master gaslighters, manipulators, everything to the point where they can trap people for a certain amount of time. And I'm grateful that I got out when I did because I know that people are currently still in them after 20 years or didn't leave after 30 years and I'm sorry for anyone who has ever, ever had to deal with a narcissist, parent, relationship, friend, whatever. When we got married, there was a flip that was switched. So she says after they were married, a flip switched and the abuse began. And this is actually incredibly common and well documented and echoed in her comments. We were together for five years before we got married. When I tell you the day we got married, the switch flipped. It's just insane. Four years of dating, no signs, honeymoon, all the red flags. The day I got married, three hours into it, I knew I was in trouble before that, everything was perfect. And yes, this is well documented, and this is from a domestic violence website. And they say over time, tension starts building. Usually when the abuser feels the victim is sufficiently hooked into the relationship, either through marriage, moving in together, or getting pregnant, the abuse starts. And not only is this well documented, this was also my personal experience. We bought a house together, the mask dropped. I'm here to scare anybody, I'm just here to inform. Because some abusers are incredibly calculative and can keep up a facade for a pretty long time. And while yes, we have things like how to spot an abuser early on, like if the relationship moves too quickly, sometimes that doesn't always apply. So what I do instead is focus on educating about covert abuse tactics so we can spot manipulation and covert abuse before it escalates and it always escalates because what happens is just as a society but also just us we're very misinformed and undereducated about what constitutes abuse and what is coercive control and how we spot it we just might feel like there's something off in the relationship but not be able to identify it as abuse so instead if we focus on more the abuse tactics we can leave before we're too sufficiently hooked and that's what she did. Although they just got married, she was like, nope, I'm out of here. Really smart, because otherwise that could be years of hurt. This is the first red flag that I got from my narcissistic ex-husband when we first got married. Go watch that video she made. She actually, there was one little segment in there where she talked about sleeping all the time. And I, and I found it because I was scrolling through the comments and I saw someone else say, Mine slept all the time too. I had no, I had no idea that was a form of manipulation. Let me tell you, sleeping all the time. I, okay. Mine would always just say, oh, I'm a night owl, you know? And I get that people, you know, they like to stay up, whatever, great. You know, that's you, be you. I am an early riser typically. Don't really like that about myself, but I like to get up early anyway. Um, traditionally how it would work would be he would stay up till 3, 4, 5 a.m. And I would be in bed because I'd have to be up and go to work the next day. You know, he didn't have a normal day job like that. So he'd stay up till, you know, 3, 4, 5 a.m. <clears throat> and then I would go to work. I'd get up, start getting ready for work. 
he would go to sleep. And then I would get home from work and he'd just be waking up, sometimes 2 p.m., sometimes like 4 p.m. And so really what that meant was after I'm done with work, that really gave us like, you know, really two to three hours before I was like getting ready for bed to go to bed. So if we wanted to go out and do anything, go have dinner, um, anything, spend quality time together, it was that little short window of time, right? So, um, and then if I had a day off, it was pretty much my day off. I would spend it alone. I would figure out something to do with myself and that would be it. And I got to a point where I just got exhausted with trying to express, you know, I want to spend time with you, basically, and not getting any, like, reciprocation for that. Just because there was never like, oh, I want to spend time with you. No. That was never clearly stated. It was like, it was like, oh, yeah, well, we'll do this, we'll do that. But it never happened. And again, it was like, oh, well, I was a night owl. I couldn't go to sleep. So the excuse was I couldn't fall asleep. So I just stayed up till 5 a.m. And then I was left there to go, okay, it's my day off, like a weekend or something. Guess I'll go have brunch by myself, right? Which, I don't know, if, if any of you have been married, you don't really get married to go to brunch by yourself. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, anyway, I had no idea either that that was a form of manipulation. I, didn't even, I just didn't think about it. You know, I just thought that's his personality. That was a big thing. Throughout the whole thing, I thought, oh, that's just his personality. And now that I'm seeing other people talk about their experiences, I'm like, maybe it's, maybe it was manipulation because we never spent time together. And the time that he was awake and I was awake, it it was like... It just wasn't anything. No. What's your thoughts on this? Please feel free to drop your thoughts in the comment section. Let's continue the conversation in the comment section. Until next time, see you all. Bye. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.